So um, I wanted to go over some new techniques that I learned today for raw therapy and kind of see what kind of image I can get. Um, here I am in um, Digicam. Um, you can see um, the image here. Um, kind of gives you a good level of where we can end up in terms of um, how punchy it is, at least as a base. Um, you may not be able to tell um, due to the quality of the stream, but um, there's a bit of noise in both faces, and um, that's because this um, picture's at uh, ISO 1250, which is a bit high. And so um, I was looking at another um, image um, with uh, my sister-in-law and her husband-to-be, and um, um, it was much, much cleaner. That was ISO uh, 640. So um, let's take a look at raw therapy here. So uh, you can see the auto levels um, is not too far. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit less contrasty but it's not too far from at least um, what we would see in the uh, if we had just taken a JPEG but you can definitely see some um, you see how noisy the image is um, you can see in the face there's a lot of noise there and you can see um, here on his shoes there's a lot of noise as well uh, so what and let me just take a look at the neutral versus the auto levels. So neutral would look like this. Auto levels, neutral. So the, the auto levels is um, increasing the exposure, some highlight compression, and so on and so forth. I'm going to start from neutral. And um, so normally what I would do and what I was doing um, all day uh, yesterday is I would I was using these tools which are similar to the tools that I had at my disposal in um, Lightroom. So I would drop the exposure compensation. Um, that might be a bit low, but you know, kind of just mess with this and mess with that, and kind of try and end up in a similar or better place than before. <laughs> but today I learned about how. Um, um, the exposure moves both the black and the white point. Um, how a lot of these um, sliders here are working on RGB values, which means that there can be some slight shifts in color as you make some of these changes. So instead, what we're better off doing is at least to start off using these tone curves, and then um, we can always. Um, use do some fine um, uh, work here to adjust a little bit and um, so this is just going to be the kind of the uh, tip of the iceberg in terms of what I learned today because today I also learned about using HSV and um, CCAM and other color spaces that have or lab space which has different properties for example lightness here doesn't really touch the colors the way that um, that the curves um, up here do, um, but so I'm gonna I'm gonna let me see I'm gonna start with a with a light curve and see here. So I'm gonna see see the effect this has here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring bring this a little lower and bring that a little lower, kind of. This is almost perfect colors right here, right now. It's a little bit dark, but it's not too bad. Maybe bring this up a bit. Maybe bring up a mid, mid the mid tones here. Okay, that's almost lifelike right there. That's almost, and compared to um, the JPEG, it's actually not not too far off um, from our you know our minimum potential. Um, so now. Um, yeah, so, so when you're doing the L curve, you're only affecting the lightness. You're not affecting the colors. Those are on the A and the B channels. Now, um, let's go back over here and do some of the curves that I learned about today. So the first curve I learned about is that you should try and do a saturation and value blending first. Now you can see here that um, my histogram is almost perfect. 
um, goes from one side to the other, which is nice. Um, there's some blown out stuff here, which you can see there, all that is blown out. We can do some highlight recovery later. And these are the blacks, the, the pure blacks, although not really. So I think we can fix that a bit as well. So uh, let's start off with, let's just bring the highlights up just a little bit more. And let's bring the shadows down a little bit more. So you see we're getting a little more contrast here in the picture. It's looking a little better than it was before. Let me see if I want to change this a bit. That's not so bad right there, actually. That's pretty good. And um, so now on the second tone curve, what I learned is make this one a film-like. And so now, if it needs any, let's see if it does actually. So I don't see any need to touch that there. Um, let me see here if there's any need to touch this here. Oops, that went way, way too hard. <laughs> uh, mm, no, I'm thinking that uh, we're already pretty close to where we want to be. Um, so I'm actually going to tr turn off this curve. Um, what I do want to do is kind of fix the blacks here a little bit. So I'm going to uh, move the black point a bit here and kind of tell it, you know, what it should consider to be black. Um, so the thing is, I might end up losing some detail in the hair. So let me check my, my sister-in-law's hair here. All right. So let me see if I go back here. No, nope, doesn't seem like I lost really any detail. Um, and I've kind of fixed things quite a bit. And now, uh, let's see what else I should uh, strive to do before I worry about that or anything. Um, let's see. Let me just take a quick look here see if perhaps we can kind of raise the the whites a bit. No, no, don't like how that looks at all. And let me come up to this curve here. Just see if I raise this a bit. Nope. Not a big change there either. I'm just trying to see in the dress if there's if I want to kind of punch it up a bit. So let me let me try moving the exposure just a bit. No, that's not really giving me what I want either. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. Let's see if we can bring back some of these highlights here. So if I... So that's all the way. We don't want that at all. In fact, these are so blown, I don't think it's worth compromising on her dress in order to fix that. Check the lightness just a bit. Just a little bit, not too much. We don't want to undo what we did with all these curves here. All right. So now, um, so far, so good. Those are most of the new things I learned. Um, let's go to uh, the Vibrance here. And I'm going to not link the Pastel and Saturated, and I am going to protect the skin tones. And just push the shirt a bit. And then I want to come here to the blue channel. Um, um, push the blue channel a little kind of to increase the shirt a bit. Let me see. First let me go all the way just to see. So that kind of is a global global change, so I don't want to do that too much. Um, but I do want to bump it up a little bit. Bump up the saturation just a little bit more. So that gives me here in the pants, here in the shirt. Um, I like the skin tones. Everything's looking pretty good here. And um, so this equalizer here with the different channels, um, this can kind of so you can you can mess with colors here. See, end up doing some really weird stuff. I'm not gonna worry about that at all. But I did learn about that today, which is kind of cool. Um, okay, so I think it's it's pretty much where I want it to be. Um, Although, let's see, 
Yep, it's definitely a pretty dull blue shirt. Um, let's see if I can just push up the pastels a bit, see if that helps. Mm. No, definitely don't want to do that. So I think I'm pretty much where I need to be with this picture. So let's work on um, the sharpening. So if I switch to sharpen only edges, see some that can with the extremely noisy images that can make a big difference. But if you see here, it's not making a huge difference on the noise. Now, what I learned about today is the way that the noise works. So this noise that's here on the black, the pure black, that's what would be um, reduced with impulse noise reduction. Um, and this one one here, this lets you know that you need to be zoomed all the way in, otherwise you're not going to see the effects of what's going on. So I'm going to see if there's any amount that I can change here. So I usually start off by kind of going all the way and seeing what it does. So it does help quite a bit if I go back. So obviously that's affecting everything, and I don't want to go so um, hard because I'm losing a lot of detail there in the face. So I'm just going to bump it up just a bit, get rid of some of the, the noise there. And now for the real noise reduction here in the face and everywhere else. Um, so this was his shoes. I'm going to move this back to uh, my sister-in-law's face. You can see there's definitely um, quite a bit of noise. Um, so we're going to go to a high. Um, and I like to use a slider. So what I learned today was kind of go out until you've achieved the amount of noise reduction that you need. Um, so let's see. Oh, haha, I didn't turn it on. I was like, why isn't this doing anything? You have to turn it on. So I went way too far. So let me go back, back, back. So you kind of want to get it to about right at the level you want. So 22 is pretty good. Let's see how far back I can go and still be happy with the results. So there's nothing in the shoe, not much there. 18 is OK. 16 is OK. 13 is OK. All right, now we're starting to get too noisy. So if we go to about 16 or so, 17, OK? All right, so that got rid of a lot of the noise. It did also get rid of some of the detail. So what this luminance detail here does is, if you put it to 100, that means that you've just turned off what you did here. So you can kind of use this to fine grain. So this is without any detail. So if we kind of go this way, we can kind of bring back the detail and make a noise to detail compromise. I think that's a pretty good compromise if you look at my father-in-law's face here and you look at my sister-in-law's face. It's not too bad. Um, it's definitely lost some of the um, definition, but it's also a woman's face, so I think perhaps it could be quite pleasing to be um, so soft. Um, so uh, we'll just go back to, to automatic global. Um, and so that takes care of that. There's not really any defringing to do here. And so um, those are the main things that I learned today um, while I was looking at the way raw therapy works. Um, use turn tone curves, starting with saturation and value blending. Use film-like curves to help if you need it. Um, working in lab space can be quite nice because it allows you to um, change the lightness without affecting the colors, without shifting the colors. <coughs> and I was able to get a pretty nice thing without shifting things very much at all. Um, there's other things here that I have, I read about today. I didn't see them in any tutorials, but um, like chromasticity and contrast that I have to kind of go through a couple times before I'll really get the 100% gist of it. Um, so if we did go one to one, let's see here. Just give that a second. So, yeah, that's actually pretty pleasing. If we go back to before we did the um, noise reduction, about here, 
see how much noisier that is, how much uglier that photo looks. If you come here, much nicer, much nicer. And especially when you view it at the typical settings where you're going to view it on a computer or Facebook or whatever, you can see how much nicer it is and how much we were able to fix an image even though it's ISO 1250. Um, so I'll go ahead and save it. Um, yeah, I'll save it here. Um, okay. All right, so that's saved. And so just for a side by side, that's what um, would have the camera would have captured um, if we had just taken a JPEG. As you can see, it's definitely a lot noisier than what we ended up with. Um, we ended up matching the colors quite well. Um, the uh, the what would have been a JPEG is still a slight bit punchier, but I felt that um, you know the skin tones are actually a little bit closer to reality. And uh, so I like it better this way. Um, although I could always punch it up a bit and just do a save as. So if I if I come back over here and um, if I did just a regular saturation bump, I could bump things up a bit. Um, so 18 is not so bad. 33 is going a bit too far maybe around 22. Let's see there. There we're kind of almost uh, uh, a little bit punchier than what the JPEG would have been. So I can save that one as um, punchy. And so there you go. So um, that's a way to kind of start moving away from um, just the sliders that you have in um, in Lightroom and moving towards a workflow that gives you a lot more control of what's going on and lets you work in whichever way you feel works best for you. There's a, a lot of different ways to accomplish similar goals. Um, from what I've read, there seems to be one best way to do any particular thing you're trying to do. But there are many paths that lead to many similar places, which is kind of cool. So um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next.